All right, look at this. We have a Mern application running right here. And I mean, it only took us like, what, 10 minutes to get this set up? That's pretty neat. Hey guys, and welcome back to Akamai Developer. In this video, we're gonna go over setting up MongoDB, setting up an Express application, as well as developing a backend and a front end uh, so that you can set up uh, a chat application for support or whatever purpose you might have in your enterprise. Now, MERN stands for Mongo, ExpressJS, uh, React and Node.js. These are super robust technologies that are ubiquitous in our line of work. So this will be a great guide for you to get started working with these things to make an app for yourself like this. Now, if you don't have a Linode account already, you can use the $100 of free credit with the link below to get started. Uh, and you can try this out for free, essentially. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up a compute instance. So let's go into our uh, cloud dashboard. We're gonna go up here to create and we're gonna hit Linode. We're gonna choose Debian 11. We'll select a region that's close to you. Uh, for me, that's going to be uh, Newark, New Jersey. And then let's go to shared CPU. This isn't gonna be a super demanding thing. So one gigabyte nanode is gonna suit our purposes just fine. We'll scroll down here and we're going to set a password for our account. So let's go ahead and set that. And we'll scroll down some more. We don't need any of these. So let's just hit, go ahead and hit create. And after a few minutes of provisioning, we will have our compute instance set up and ready for us to use. In the meantime, let's go ahead and install SSHFS, which will allow us to um, mount a directory on this Linode as a drive letter on Windows. This also works on Linux and Mac OS as well. The good thing about SSHFS is that all you need is an SSH connection uh, and this abstracts that connection into a file system for you. So uh, you don't have to set up anything special. You don't need Samba set up or anything like that. All you need is an SSH connection is I'm going to open up SSHFS. So let's go add connection. And we're just going to put in the details for our Linode that we just created. And we can use any directory we want to set as the root of the drive letter. And we'll set the drive letter to be T, I guess. And we'll hit save. Now, if we hit connect, we can actually open up this drive and we can see that we have full write permissions in here. We can create directories. We can do whatever we need to do. So this is gonna let us develop directly on our Linode. So this will let us now use tools like VS Code. So let's do that. Let's go here to VS Code. We're gonna go to open folder and we'll go down here to Linode Dev, the T drive, and we'll hit open. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna have some fun here. So let's log into our Linode uh, via SSH. All right, we are logged in here. So now what we wanna do is we're going to uh, apt install GNU PG. Now we're gonna install MongoDB on this system. And to do that, we need to import the GPG key uh, if you aren't running as root, you would need to set uh, put sudo here. Uh, then for Debian, we're going to import the apt uh, list here. And again, I'm running as root, so I don't need sudo here. Now, let's do apt update, apt install mongodb org and type yes and let it install. All right, now we're done with that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is install Node.js. So let's go ahead and run this command. We don't have curl installed, so let's install curl first. And now let's run this command. All right, so now we've got Node installed or Node version manager, so let's exit and then we're gonna log back in here. Now we should be able to just do NVM install Node. Great, so now we have Node installed and that completes setting up our uh, basic dev environment. So let's go back to VS Code and we're gonna create a new directory and we'll just call this uh, example mern app slash server. So now we've created uh, two directories. We've created uh, example mern app and server here. So now what we wanna do, we created this directory in slash SRV. So we're gonna CD to slash SRV and then example Mern server, server. Now we're in the directory we're gonna be working in. So let's do npm init y, 
npm install save express mongoose. So let's open another folder here. We're going to go into these directories here. Boom. Now we're in the applications directory. All right, we're going to create a new folder or new file here, I should say. And we're just going to call it index.js. Now in this file, we're going to set up uh, some basic requirements here. So we're going to import express. We're going to set up uh, the body parser and we're going to configure our application as well as uh, setting up the router and the port number that we want this application to be running on. Now we need to initialize uh, Mongoose, which is the uh, driver or the, the node driver for MongoDB. So we'll import Mongoose and then we'll set up our uh, DB URL. Uh, and so this is going to be the scheme that we're using or the protocol that we're using. And then this is the address, which is our local address, uh, followed by the name of the database that this application is going to be connected to. From here, we're going to import our model. Um, now, we haven't created this yet, so we'll need to create this in a moment. Um, and message model is going to be uh, essentially, it, this is similar to a schema in a SQL style uh, database. Now we're gonna connect Mongoose to the database. Uh, so we're gonna connect, and then once we're connected, we're going to uh, print the, to the console that the connection is established, and if there's an error, we're going to say connection error, and then we're printing out that error, uh, the value of that error. Now we wanna make sure that uh, cross-origin requests are not gonna be rejected by the browser. So we're gonna re uh, respond with some headers that should clear up that issue, and we're gonna also use the body parser in our application. And now we're gonna to get to the meat and potatoes of the stuff we need to do in this uh, in this one file because most of this is, is boilerplate stuff. So now we're going to create some endpoints and these are gonna be endpoints that the client is going to connect to in order to interact with the server. Uh, the first one here is going to be an endpoint to uh, access uh, the available messages in our chat. So what we're doing here is we are uh, looking for any available model that matches message text. And then what we're gonna do is respond to the request by converting any data we find into JSON and sending it back. Now that's all well and good, but if we don't have an endpoint to uh, send messages to, uh, then there isn't gonna be any messages to find in the database. So let's do that next. So we're just going to check if uh, request body message text is true-ish. Uh, and if it is, then we're going to insert that into the database. And then we're going to return that response as JSON. Finally, we want to tell the application to listen on the port that we are planning on using here. So that's going to be port 5000 in our case. We're not done yet. We can't test it quite yet. Let's go ahead and create a new file and we're going to say models slash message.js and we're going to do a little bit more boilerplate setup we're going to import mongoose and we're going to uh, use um, schema from mongoose and then we're going to create a new schema and this is going to be pretty straightforward there's really only going to be two fields in uh, our message uh, that's going to be message text and then it's going to be the ID of the uh, data that's being stored in the database. We don't have to specify that because that already that's automatically created when we insert um, a message into the database. Then we're going to actually create the message model from this new schema here. And then we're going to uh, use common JS to export message model. And that's how we're going to receive it back here. And now once we switch back here, you can see that message model is now uh, showing as a class rather than as a function, which it was showing before. And now we should be ready to start testing stuff out. So let's go ahead and um, run some commands on the server. We're going to run sudo system ctl start mongod. Right, we don't need sudo. So we're just going to run systemctl start mongod. Now, if you're not running as root, again, you're gonna to wanna to use sudo there. Then we're going to run node uh, index.js. And there we go. We're getting some warnings for some deprecated stuff, but that's okay. Um, we have our database connection established. 
in another command line, we can run this command and that's, we can see we get a response here uh, from our server. And that's pretty cool. Now you wanna make sure you put in your, either your host name or your IP address uh, here, but that seemed to work for us. Now what we can do is run this command. And again, we want to set this to whatever we're running here and we should get the results back and we do. Now you can see that this is send, uh, sending back uh, an object literal where this is sending an array of object literals, which if we add more messages, we should get more responses when we run this command. Now curl lets us issue requests uh, over HTTP. So um, you can see here, we're sending a post request with the header type application JSON and we're sending this value to the server. Um, and it's going to this endpoint here. And then down here, what we're doing is we're just issuing a GET request to the messages endpoint. So the first response, the first uh, command we ran was post messages. And the second command searches our database and returns any um, models that it finds in that database that matches this, this, the, uh, the query here. Cool, we know that that's working now. The next thing that we need to do is we're gonna go back to our server here and we're going to quit out of the app running in the background. And we're going to run this command. npm install save dev concurrently. Now we're gonna open our package.json and under scripts, let's just go ahead and add this in here. So this is going to allow us to run the server uh, just by running npx uh, server. Uh, then we have our client, so that's going to exist up one in the tree uh, of our directory, and we'll be able to run that. And then we can do npx run app stack, and it will run both of these at the same time. So we'll go up one now uh, into uh, example mern app. We'll save our package.json. And now you can see that we have server and we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call it client. We're gonna say cd dot dot and then we're gonna do npx create uh, react app client. I need to spell that correct. Create react app. Now after a few minutes, the react app installation initialization process should be complete. Okay, that's done. So now we're going to install Axios. Now Axios is a way to actually issue requests back and forth uh, between the client and the server. Now, let's go back to VS Code. We're gonna to go to client. We're gonna to go to app.js. And we actually don't need any of this, so let's delete it. Then we're going to run, uh, put our own stuff in there. We're gonna import React and we're gonna import app.css. We're gonna import messages from messages, which does not exist yet. Um, we will work on that in a moment. And then we're going to initialize our actual uh, application interface here. Now let's create a new file. We're going to call it messages.js. Now in this file, we're going to uh, import React as well as Axios. And we're going to create a new uh, component here. Now this is going to allow us to handle uh, the messaging uh, back and forth between the client and the server. So the first thing we want to do is uh, set up our state. Then we want to uh, fetch messages when the component actually mounts. But we haven't created this method yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Essentially here we're using Axios, we're going to get our messages, and if there is uh, data in our response, then we're going to update our interface. Otherwise we're going to say no messages. So that's fetching messages, but what about actually posting them to the server? Let's set that up. So we have our send message uh, method here, and this will essentially allow us to do just that. So if the send state is uh, an empty string, then it's going to give us an error and say, or it's gonna log to the console and say, enter a message text. Otherwise, it's going to convert that, uh, the, the data to send, and it's going to post it to the endpoint that we set up. Uh, then we're going to fetch our messages uh, again and update the uh, the state of our application. Now we also need a way to actually show the messages. So we're going to add this list messages method 
And finally, we're going to add our render method here, which uh, allows the component to be shown in the client. Uh, then we want to just make sure we export our default messages here. We'll go ahead and save that. Now we're going to open up our package file here, and we're just going to add proxy. What we want to do here is actually set the IP address or the host name of our uh, Linode. Now, if you're running this on a local development environment, you could set this to localhost. I'm running this on my uh, Linode, so I'm going to set that value to this. Now, let's go back to our SSH, and we're going to uh, CD into our client, and we're going to npm start. Oh, and we need to put in HTTP colon slash slash in order for this proxy to actually work the way it's expected to work. So we're going to go into our browser and we're just going to try and access this uh, page and and there it is. We have our client running uh, and you can see that it says we have no messages. And I believe that's because we don't have the server set up. Uh, the server's not running in the background. So let's go back here. We're going to cancel. We're going to exit out of this by hitting control C. We're going to CD into uh, the parent directory and then we're going to go into server. All right, now we're in server. So what we want to do here is run um, npm run app underscore stack, which is the command we set up before. Excellent. Now, if we refresh this page, this is a test. Neat. So let's add some more uh, messages here. Hey, howdy. How you doing? If we hit enter. Uh, enter doesn't work. Send does. And there you go. We have, this is a test. Hey, howdy, how you doing? Welcome Akamai developers. Boom, look at that. So now we have a working Mern application uh, running on a Linode. Uh, there are other things you might want to do here. Uh, getting this set up for, for example, like a uh, support chat system for your enterprise. You might want to like expand this out and add user accounts and such like that. It's a little out of the scope of this video, um, but I think that this is pretty nifty. Um, and it's a good starting place for anyone who's looking to do something like that. The Mern stack is quite robust and well supported. I mean, MongoDB is like my preferred database. And then you have stuff like Node and React, um, which are also very well supported and, and super um, ubiquitous in, in our world. So, so if you don't want to like copy all of this by hand, you can head over to the uh, developer uh, documentation with the link below. There will be links to download all of the files that I used in this project, as well as uh, examples on how to set up authentication using JSON web tokens uh, and user accounts and such like that. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and uh, I'll see you in the next one.